Hi, I'm Jesse, and this is Shine with Jesse. If you watched the video from last week, you'd know that uh, we were talking about different ways that we can love each other in a time where we're not really allowed to be around each other. So like instead of doing handshakes, doing elbow bumps, or your different handshakes that you can make up, we talked about how you can write letters and make cookies for people who you weren't allowed to be in the same room with right now, even though you wanted to be. And different ways that we can just show love to each other. So today we're going to be talking about love again, but just what love looks like a little bit differently. So in the Bible, Jesus was talking to these people called the Pharisees. Now these are people who were very high and mighty. They believed they knew everything about the law. They knew everything about the Bible. And they were very strong-willed. And they didn't like Jesus that much. And one day they saw him sitting with a bunch of people who were kind of outcasts in society. People who people didn't think were worthy of sitting at the table of a rabbi. And so uh, these Pharisees, they went over to Jesus and they were asking him how he could be sitting with these people who everybody knew were sinners and everybody knew were not people of God. And so he replied with this story. Um, he told very special stories called parables and every parable had a purpose. So this story is about how God loves us. So in the beginning of the story, there is a father and two sons. The younger son walks up to his dad one day and he says, Dad, I want my inheritance. Now, if you don't know what an inheritance is, it's what you get when a family member dies. It is their possession that's possessions that you get from them. So he's basically telling his dad, Dad, I don't care if you're alive or dead. You're basically dead to me right now. Just give me money. That's all I want from you. And his dad could have and probably even should have said, I'm not doing that. That is the rudest thing you could ever say to me. You don't even deserve to be in my house. Go, like, I don't want you in my home anymore. But he didn't. He gave him the money. And so the son, he left home and he went to a different country and he spent every single cent and spent it pretty quickly. He made all these friends by partying all the time and spending money on them and buying all these extravagant things. And um, he just kind of squandered the wealth that his dad gave him. And when the money ran out, the money ran out and he didn't have anything left. And when it ran out, there was a famine in this country. So everybody was out of work and everybody was looking for food. And so if you didn't already have some sort of wealth in your pocket, you weren't going to get anything from anybody else. And so he was looking everywhere for a job. He finally found a job feeding pigs. Now that probably wouldn't be that big a deal today, but back then, that was a huge deal. That meant that you were the scum of the earth. You were touching pigs. Pigs were considered, considered a very dirty animal back in the day, and people didn't want to touch them if they could help it. But his job was to feed these pigs. And he looked at the pigs, and he looked at the food that he was giving them, and he realized he was so hungry, he was wanting to eat the slop that he was feeding these pigs. And he kind of looked around at his life and he was thinking, the people who work for my dad, that his servants eat so much better than this. What have I done? I've wasted my life in this way. And so he makes the decision that he's going to go back home and ask for his dad's forgiveness and not try to return as his son, but maybe see if he could get a job as a servant because he knew that he messed up big time and that his dad probably wouldn't want him back home. And so he leaves this country that he's in and he starts to go home and he's practicing what he's going to say to his dad over and over again in his mind and he makes it almost home but he's still kind of a far way off and I imagine his head is just kind of down he's looking down in shame he knows what he did and now he has to fix his mistake and he's practicing over and over again what he's gonna say and so he's walking and before he can even see his dad, his dad sees him and he starts running to him. And when he gets to him, his son goes down to his knees and he starts begging for his dad forget his dad's forgiveness. But his dad just ignores all of that and hugs him in the tightest hug he can give him and kisses his face. And he starts shouting at his servants to get a party together. They were going to have a feast. And he put these new nice clothes over his son. He gave him shoes. He gave him jewelry. He dressed him up to be his son. 
And so he was explaining to everybody how his son was lost, but now he's found. And so he's really excited to have this party and there's music going and there's food cooking. But out in the field, a little bit away from where the party is going on, the other son, his brother, hears the party and he wonders what's going on. So he asks the servant what happened because he had no idea that any of this was going on. And the servant tells him that his brother came home and that his dad was throwing a party for him, an extravagant one at that. And the brother, instead of being excited like his dad, was upset. He was thinking about how he had been this very faithful son. He stayed to work the land. He'd never tried to take anything from his dad while his brother was kind of lazy, didn't want to do anything. All he did was take money from his dad. And he was upset and hurt that he was willing to throw this party for his brother who was not really worth it in his eyes. And so when he kind of, he goes up to his dad and he asks him about this and he's very upset. And his dad listens to what he has to say, but he kind of shushes him and he says, you have been with me your entire life. You have been faithful. You have been doing everything you were supposed to do. I may have never have thrown a party for you, but everything I have is yours. That has never been taken away from you. But we need to celebrate because your brother, he was lost. He was dead in his sin, but he come home came home he's alive again we need to celebrate this now this that's the end of the story but if you listen real closely sometimes we can relate to some of those characters right sometimes we mess up sometimes we do things that we're not supposed to and we kind of mess up big time and we think that we're not worth redemption or forgiveness and we kind of have to go back and fix our mistakes and shame. Or maybe we don't do anything wrong. Maybe we are hard workers and we do everything the way that we're supposed to, just like the other brother, right? But then we see that the people around us get everything that we want while maybe we don't. Now, both of these sons, both of them had reasons to need forgiveness. But both of them, when they expected a different answer than what they got, they were both received with love. And that's what exactly what God does with us. In everything that we do, he loves us. Whether we make mistakes, whether we're upset about where we are in life, whether we just need someone to say that they love us, God is always there and he always loves us. And I think that's really important to remember right now, that you are loved very dearly by a God who cares so much about you. Now, this part might be a little bit weird. I want you to close your eyes for a second, okay? Are they closed? Now, I want you to think of the most beautiful sunset you've ever seen. Or maybe a beach that you think is absolutely extraordinary. Or maybe even a waterfall, the mountains, some part of nature that you think is just beautiful. And I want you to think about that for a second. How God created that and he made it with purpose and intent. And he made it so the world can be amazing. But the world wasn't finished when he made waterfalls and beaches and mountains and rainbows and all the beautiful things that we can think of. He knew that the world wasn't complete without us, that it wasn't complete without you. And he loves us so much that in the midst of all the beautiful things that he made, he made us. And he made us so that he could love us. I want you to know that right now, God loves you so much. And I love you. And your parents love you. And your family loves you. You are loved. So that's the lesson for today. Thanks for joining us.